welcome to Six Pack Philosophy, where we take philosophy, mix it with beer, and apply it to the questions you deal with every day. Welcome to Six Pack Philosophy. I'm Anastasia here with Mike and John, and this week we're discussing the value of honesty. Honestly. But before we get started, what are we drinking, guys? Do I have to be honest in this? No. Okay. You we- never are. It's okay. <laughs> Bite my ass. We are drinking Mercenary. From the Odell Brewing Company in Fort Collins, Colorado. The ABV is what? I'm pulling it up. 400. It's 400. The Nine, ABV, actually, it's 9.3. 9.3. This is a Close du- enough. <laughs> this is a double IPA. So um, uh, my thoughts on this right now going into it are... Uh, fuck me for buying it? Fuck you for buying this. Yeah. But we'll, we will see. We will see. Yeah. Uh, I, 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 I've got to be fair with this, right? I've got to be honest about my opinion. Honest, yes. Yeah. I honest. think you'll honestly like it. So. Um, um, woo! That's a lot of head. Um, Is and, it a lot of hops? Usually, usually Look at I'll, all that. Good God. <laughs> Who taught you how to pour a beer? Nobody. That's, That's the, the problem. problem. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, Wait, sorry. I cracked myself up a little bit earlier. I think you, you just do like that a all lot the time. I know. I got to get a handle on you myself. got to get now. a handle. All right, so. We're doing honesty today. The uh, value of the honesty. The value of honesty. All right. Which I think, first we have to outline what honesty even is. Um, and so in this episode, I have a series of questions that I want to ask and attempt to answer. Uh, the first of which being... Well, and, and, and I just want to say, and correct me if I'm wrong here, but this is... You're and, wrong. And, and we should do, do an episode of, on it. This is not a show on the hard problem of truth. Correct. Like a, a this course- is assuming that truth exists. Yeah, on correspondence theory and coherence theory. This is. We should do that shit. I agree. I agree. We yes. should. That would be awesome. You want to do that next week? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Okay. Sure. Hey, we plan shows That's what in the we air. do. We plan our shows in the air. We, yes, absolutely. Uh, we don't actually have meetings because we end up drinking. Uh, so <laughs> that's just kind of how things work. Like okay, Sunday morning, stop right? entertaining yourself with the head on that beer and, and talk to us a little bit. So the first question that I want to ask is, what does it mean to be honest? Um, because I think that in life, when we, for instance, ask somebody, be honest with me. Um, when we critique someone's character and say that they are <laughs> dishonest, um, I think that that's loaded with a lot of information and it's not always clear exactly what that is. Um, I also want to ask what ways people might be deceiving themselves and others um, other than the obvious telling of lies. Um, I want to, I want to take a look at the question of uh, do deceptions (coughs) common among society count null against your honesty valuation? Um, so th- that's like, how are you doing? I'm doing great when really your dog is yeah, dying. Yeah. 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 Um, Fine. And among others, there are a lot that I think that are worth considering yeah. there. Um, what benefits are derived from being honest versus dishonest? Um, what harm is caused by being honest or dishonest? Um, and can a person interact with others honestly? So uh, starting from there, from the beginning... And working our way down. I like to go the other way. Let's let's turn it around this no. time. Let, let, let's go ahead and finish the show first. Yes. Yes. Cheers, guys. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> All right. Um, so I, I guess I probably didn't have to actually say that we were going to start from the start beginning. Start at the beginning, yeah. Yes. Um, so looking at honesty from what I could find from other philosophers and then exploring the topic on my own, I found... Three, what I think we could call facets of honesty. The first one being truthfulness. So saying things, and again, we kind of talked about this in the intro. This is assuming that there is truth, period. Mm -hmm. Um, There are questions of hard skepticism uh, suggesting that truth is is entirely made up and not a thing that exists in and of itself. Um, but with this discussion, we have to assume that there is a truth. Well, and, and uh, I, I want to say, uh, just for those getting a little preview of what, of what we're going to do in the next show, there's also a, a completely different hard problem of truth where you have to ask the question, even given that, that information can be uh, obtained by the human mind, 
um, what does it mean for information to be truly correlated to reality that deals a lot with language theory and has mm -hmm. nothing to do with heart skepticism. So those are two barriers we're just right. kind of skipping over in this. Yeah. Um, so the other one is straightforwardness. Um, so for instance, you could say something that is entirely factual, but you could obscure it in language um, that makes the truth less obvious. Um, so being straightforward is another facet of honesty. Um, and then the integrity, which would be the congruence of your words versus your actions. So saying that I believe that you should always stop at a stop sign, but not being the person who actually does, um, is, a, is an incongruence between those two and would therefore um, cause a lack of integrity in that particular instance. Um, so from there, I want to move on to um, some ways that that people are deceptive. Can y'all think of anything along, or I guess jumping back, can y'all think of any other facets of honesty that maybe aren't uh, explored there? Yeah, uh, th there's actually a couple I've come across. So uh, one deals with relevance. So the, uh, the, the thing that comes to mind in this is the, the famous oath that most Americans know whenever you're about to sit on the, the, the witness stand at a trial. What is it? Tell the truth, the, the whole, whole truth. truth, and nothing but the truth. But if, if we really look at this at its face value, and we say, tell me about the events that happened on, on June 5th of, of, of 2016, you could say, okay, well, I woke up at 6 a.m. At 6 a.m., I got up, I realized there was a slight pain in my leg. I stretched it out a little bit, I went to brush my teeth. But th there is an element inherent in that that people kind of assume that's actually goes against the the, the words of it of relevance they we, really mean the pertinent truth or the relevant yeah, truth yeah the yeah. things that happen in pertinence to the murder we're investigating yeah. we, we you know and, and there's a lot of questions of with with uh, relevance of if you throw out relevance could you even be honest do you have time to tell about every single detail that happened that mm -hmm. thing uh, could you remember all the details even if you somehow had the time to do it um, there's, there's another thing of, of your obligation to tell the truth, right? So for instance, somebody, your wife comes to you and says, tell me what really happened last weekend, uh, during, when you were out with the guys. Now, she doesn't want to know about your entire long trip to, to Vegas. She wants to know if you were doing anything relevant to the relationship. But the other thing that might come up is during the whole thing, you were talking to the guys about the surprise birthday party you're throwing her in three weeks. Do you have an obligation to tell her about the planning of the surprise birthday party as part of that? So that deals a little bit with relevance, but it also deals with with your obligation in that in that instance. Mm -hmm. I want you to know you just gave me an out from here on out. If my wife asked me, tell me the, the whole truth. Well, we were we were planning a surprise birthday party for you. Um, yeah. that, you fucking ruined yeah, it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Teach you to ask me about this shit. Yeah. But yeah, so so I, I, I would say say those those two are, are definitely big hitters. Is yeah. uh, relevance and obligation. Yeah, yeah. 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 Um so ways that people might be deceiving themselves and others. Um I I have found it. We did an episode on Diogenes a while back, and I my um, fascination with him has been spurred again. Um, if you'll recall, one of the stories that we told was of him uh, walking through. Can, can I just say something real quick here? I love how when we were picking our favorite philosopher, uh -huh. Mike picked Socrates <laughs> and you picked Diogenes. That and was that's all we ever talk about. Yeah. He's fucking fascinating. Do you he identify? just like naked men in barrels. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's true. Um, but if you'll recall, one of the stories that, that we told that he's famous for is walking through the crowds with a candle lighting people's faces. And when asked <laughs> why, he said he was looking for the honest man. Now, um, Diogenes spent a lot of time critiquing people's honesty. Um, he believed that you should only live with whatever it is that is absolutely necessary. That's why he was naked. That's why he didn't have a home. That's why he um, he even had a cup that he would drink out of that when he saw a small, and this is the story, 
however true that is. He saw a small boy drinking water from his hands. He threw his cup away because he realized he didn't need it. And that these were the ways in which a person would live an honest life. Um, that your clothes were a way of hiding um, your perceived flaws from society and therefore being dishonest. Um, I think he was just a pervert. Uh, that... Oh, and I'll try to remember. They can how, both be true. How they can both he, be true. How he phrased this. He didn't want to this. hide his perversions. But um, he said something along the lines of, um, you know, the things that you do at home, you should be able to do in public. This is how he justified peeing in public and masturbating in public, was that um, it was dishonest to be ashamed of those things. <laughs> I, I, I got to interject here. For, for anyone watching the YouTube, you, you saw our faces. <laughs> at least me. I was reacting to Blaine over here. Because she's telling she's telling the story of Dogeny's masturbating, masturbating in, public, in public, and I watched it on his face. He saw it in his head. He watched Dogeny's <laughs> masturbate in his head just that moment. I want you to know, this is a naked guy in a barrel masturbating, okay? Yeah. Right. He lived in a barrel. He didn't walk around in a barrel. <laughs> I think he did. In my image, he's that kid from Schoolhouse Rock walking around with nothing but a barrel on when I was, you know. Yes. Do you think that was inspired by Dogeny's and all? Uh, it, it was now. I don't know. Yeah. That, 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 that's what I see. Um. This but, cartoon character with a barrel. But, so, um, he didn't believe in addressing people with um, with respect uh, because he viewed that to be dishonest. If you truly didn't like somebody, you should say, hey, motherfucker, instead of uh, your honor I, or your grace. I suddenly understand why he's your favorite philosopher. Um, I, 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 <laughs> it all just came together. You should be able to say, hey, motherfucker, I don't like you. Well, you know. <laughs> I'm not going to argue with because that. I, I, I'm pretty sure I've heard you say, hey, motherfucker, I don't like you. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> a few times. Um, but so I want to take a look at that um, it, from the perspective of, is it truly being dishonest when you maybe do things at home that you wouldn't do in public or in front of people? Um, or is that, and I, I genuinely wonder if he wasn't looking at this incredibly superficially is that dishonesty or is it actually that the individual has measured um the value of not making other people uncomfortable um the value of civic virtue yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so ha has somebody taken this and said um you know i i highly value not making my peers uncomfortable and therefore rather than masturbating in front of them i will masturbate at home by myself um or are they truly being dishonest and shameful of themselves yeah i, I mean i can say for myself I, th I think that there is a place for both and and actually i've i've I, during my research on this i saw some scientific studies on, on the two different types of line i think they called it uh, social line, I think I have it in my notes real quick, but like social line and 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 black lies or, or something like mm -hmm. that. Anyway, it, it doesn't matter what the specific name is, um, but they, they actually did research on both what people perceived as lying and the, the social outcomes of if uh, you do one or the other. And I have to say for me, the, the difference comes in at intent and I, i'm actually going to agree with somebody who i largely disagree with her views on honesty which is Immanuel kant uh that a lot of what lying has to do with is whether you are looking at the person you are lying to as an ends or a means unto themselves uh when he when he talks about this he says if you're lying to somebody and he he he, he takes lying to an extreme but if you're lying to somebody and you're using them as a manipulation tool, then you, you know, you, 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 the way he describes it is you've taken the reins of destiny out of their hands and put them in yours because you haven't given them the full information. And I kind of agree with that, but so many times our social lies are not necessarily a means of manipulation. It, it is, it is a true means of. I want you to be happy. That is a, a true thought I have. It's like it's like lubrication. It just keeps the machine operating. E exactly. This information isn't relevant to you. So I, I was waiting. I was waiting. You have something to say about lubrication? I'm yeah. just laughing to myself yeah. over here as yeah. well. All right. Yeah. I value the ongoing 
yeah. uh, actions of this show, so I'm going to laugh to myself instead of I, out loud. I, I really wanted a but lubrication thanks. comment, but well, I, I tried. I worked hard you with that. You threw statement. the softball out there, and nobody took it. I'm telling you. Um, but it would have slipped out of my hand. If you're trying to do it. <laughs> See, we got one. We got one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but if if you're trying to do it from too much lube. from a, a place of manipulation, <sighs> and a good example of this is if there's somebody you really don't like, but you think you can get something out of them, and you're yeah. like, oh no, no, I think it's great. You know, you, you're what, what we call brown nosing or ass kissing. Mm -hmm. um, if you're doing that, I really do see that as a dishonest thing. On the other hand. If you evaluate the situation, find the the information in, irrelevant to them, and then you 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 turn and say it's irrelevant to them. It's nothing they can prevent, and there's no reason for their suffering from the information, uh, from from knowledge of my suffering or whatever the case may be. I think in that case it's it, it's honest, but it's not honest to your words. It's honest to your intent. It's honest to 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 the the actions behind what you're saying. How about? How about the idea of of the dishonesty of omission? Just 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 by by, I didn't lie to you, but I didn't tell you everything. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm selling my house, and I, you know, uh, I had to paint my house because there was water damage. But you can't tell there's water damage, and I'm, 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 I'm if you ask me, I'm going to tell you about it. But otherwise, uh, you know, is, is that is that is that dishonest? Yeah, and, and I think that would fall under straightforwardness. Um, and integrity, I think, um, because I think there is an expectation that you will be, that that person will be provided with, um, all of the relevant information. And, and I do find relevance to be one of the big, biggest factors in honesty, um, that I want to explore a little bit later. Yeah. Um, yeah. I can I can address that with uh, some workings of Emmanuel Kant. If this is the right time, you were kind of talking on Diogenes there. You know what? Go ahead, because I think I'm going to have to defend Kant a little bit against your uh, my onslaught slings and arrows. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You just can't handle so, it, huh? Exactly. Yeah, uh, Emmanuel uh, uh, often tried to to. He, he knows him personally. He calls him by his first. Yeah, Yimmy, I, call I call him Manny. Well, yeah. if, if you'll let me finish, you'll, you'll you'll get a nice little chuckle out of this. Um, Emmanuel often tried to to find justifications where you could lie, but he can't. Um, so uh, he he went he went through and he actually took things to the extreme uh, to say you can't lie in any any kind of way, even through omission. Uh, to the point that he said, if a murderer is going around town trying to find your cousin, and your cousin has sought asylum in your in your house, and that murderer comes and knocks on your doors and says, "Do you know where your cousin is?" You can neither lie uh, uh, actively or through omission and tell them you don't know, because uh, at that point, if you lie to them. He gives an absurd example. He says, if you lie to them and say, no, they're not here, they're in the neighbor's house, and you don't know when your cousin has actually fled through your window because they, they know they're coming, and they go to the neighbor's house and the, the murder ends up killing them, you are responsible for the murder. You have taken responsibility in lying to that murderer and, and taken the reins of destiny out of his hands and you've held them. Uh, further, he says, you don't know what's going to happen. If you tell them the truth that they're in your basement, they may say, oh, Okay, well, never mind. I don't want to kill him after all. And so not knowing them that you have taken information away from them. He also talks about uh, if if that same murderer, he, he didn't give this specific example, but if that same murderer uh, is going around town saying, hey, do you know where, where Bob is? Do you know where Bob is? And you hear this, you're compelled to say, hey, I, I know where Bob is. He's, he's in my basement on 3rd Street. You have to tell them. You have to be honest in every facet. Can you then call Bob and say, get the hell out of the basement? Well, and, and I think that's an interesting interesting argument because that would be kind of a dishonesty to Bob because, you know, it's relevant to them. Um, but but uh, Immanuel Kant would have would have argued that that any kind of, of – and he, he talks about your intent. Any intention you have of manipulating somebody else, whether through omission, uh, whether through, through direct action, whatever that is – is wrong in that you have uh, tried to manipulate them as a means to your own ends. And he recounted that later. <laughs> See? <laughs> I love the Emmanuel so, jokes. Uh, He's great. That's, a, that, that's enough, <laughs> enough punishment for, for one day. Uh, that was good. Uh. So anyway, um, but, but he really did. Um, and the thing that he said, 
Um, These jokes are so lame. Yeah. They're the best. (laughs) So anyway, um, yes, there was a point where he said that even if, um, you know, if you had information about the potential victim of a murderer and that potential murderer um, came to you and asked where that person was, that you were obligated to tell them. He came back later after um, some thought and some criticism and said, no, you are not obligated to tell them the truth in that instance, because what they're attempting to do is to take advantage of your honesty. And and in that case, you're not obligated to tell them the I, truth. You have a greater good argument at that point. Yeah. yeah. Well, but he, he he's the, the, the father of deontology, so yeah, can yeah. you really use the greater well, good argument? Again, but I, that, that's why, that's why I, I threw that out there. There is a greater good argument that goes against that. And I, he would have made the argument that you don't have the duty to tell somebody the truth who is attempting to take advantage of you. I am really glad to hear that. I hadn't seen that in my research, so uh, if, if, if that does prove to be honest, I, I'm glad to, to hear that because, honestly, I am... Um, I'm not intending these, but as they're coming, <laughs> I'm going to capitalize. Um, but honestly, as I um, as I look back at my history with these issues, uh, w- when I had a, a, a much less learned view of them, I very much sympathized with Kant's views on this. I, I, I took a very Kantian view toward... Um, Line and, and I, I, that view has since evolved. Maybe for better, maybe maybe for worse. Uh, as I've had had to through this show, uh, kind of come to to terms with my own beliefs, had to face them in a very difficult way. So uh, I was actually planning on saying during this mm-hmm. show how I can completely sympathize, and I'm glad to see that those views evolve because now I sympathize with him even greater mm-hmm. it, 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 it's a tough it's a tough line to, uh, to follow and you know most of these philo- philosophical uh, statements when you get into them they're true in broad statements mm-hmm. but when you get down to the minutiae there's always something there that you go well but what except about for in this except instance. for in this yeah. instance you know well and, and Kant actually took it a step further than me because he would have said this was wrong in his earlier works mm-hmm. um, but I actually in some ways use my own uh, uh, philosophical convictions. I want to call them that then, but my own philosophical convictions to my advantage. So one of the moves I was known for and used to piss people off is we'd be playing a poker game and they'd say, what do you got? And I'd look and I'd, I'd tell them directly. <laughs> but they were so confounded by the act. They would say, well, if he told me that, he must not have that. Or maybe he does. And they would get into this really deep cycle of like, does he or doesn't he? Yeah. And it would throw their game off. And I did that intentionally, knowing the psychological effects of telling people my cards and then staring them in the face. I God used to, right. I used to do this with my parents. They, they, they would go out of town for the weekend and come back when I was in high school. Well, what'd you do this weekend? Oh, do a party, got drunk, got laid, had fifteen women dancing out here. You know, tell them exactly what the hell happened. <laughs> and mom would go, "Oh, you're so funny," and just let me go. Uh, yeah. Uh, so you know that was, but that wasn't that wasn't because I was a Kantian. It was because I was a bad liar. I would. It, it, it was easier to tell the truth ridiculously. Yeah, yeah. That's so so oh using that God. that manipulation <laughs> tactic, uh, Kant would have disagreed with it. But I kind of I kind of uh, abused the gray areas there to yeah. my advantage. But, um, but I think you, you know you talk about how how you were a uh, a Kantian, and I know we're kind of shifting off into Kant philosophy here. But but but. You've not you've not been a Kantian in uh, you know when I met you I met you at, at, as a pool player, and you certainly were not a Kantian as a pool player. Uh, you 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 certainly would uh, uh, adjust your game and not show not show the whole truth and stuff in order to get a gamble well, through. Well, and 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 my Kantian uh, leanings <laughs> blow them out of the water there, why yeah. don't you? But well, but but it, everybody knew it. It, it really yeah. it really doesn't from that perspective because my Kantian leanings had very much to do with verbal truth. And for some reason, I was fixated on what you say. And, and I would often say stuff like, well, I'm a three on paper. Yeah. That was the truth. On paper, yeah. I was a three. Um, now, if I cho- chose to miss a shot, I, I didn't necessarily owe it to them to say, I, I very much allowed lies of omission, but I, I didn't owe it to them to yeah. say, yeah, I actually aimed for one, you know, a, a quarter diamond off on that shot so it would bobble. I didn't owe that to them to just tell them that right. Now, if they had asked me, were, were you aiming to miss that shot? I, I'd have said, yeah, mm. probably wasn't the best decision, yeah, but, yeah, you know, yeah. or, or something like that. 
but I, I, I use the gray areas to my advantage openly. You know? I think I'll tell you, I, I know that's true because I've got to tell a story right now. <laughs> when you were the last time you were playing league, I was watching you play somebody and you missed and they missed and you missed and they missed. And I watched John. John looked across the table and goes, Are you doing the same shit I'm doing? <laughs> <laughs> No, he wasn't, by the way. He was just that bad. Damn. Uh, are you doing the same shit I'm doing? <laughs> That's awful. Um, so an area where I suspect, I, I gen I'm, I'm going to be honest here, I genuinely think that, that people in large part are um, accepting and even advocating in favor of dishonesty is in language. Mm -hmm. um, and... I want to explore a few things here, and I, I I am particularly familiar with this because of my political background, um, and that's what I'm going to reference here, but I think once we start to talk about it, um, you guys and our listeners will also see areas where this is happening. Um, but for example, we'll take, the argument has been made um, numerous times that uh, arresting someone is the same as kidnapping them. And we choose to use words that don't sound as bad. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, there was one really good example I saw just the other day. Not even... Taxation of steps, probably. Yeah, there, yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. that wasn't the one, but yeah, that's another one. But where it... it let's look at it. Taking somebody against their will and preventing them from escaping is typically considered kidnapping. Um, and, and yet when it's done by um, officers of the law, we call it arrest. And I think that, um, that what we're doing is that we are advocating and, and loving the dishonesty in that. Yeah, yeah. And I'm not saying that, before anybody gets fucking political in our comments, I'm not saying Please that there do. are not fine um, instances in which arrest is a, the the thing to do. But but what I am saying is that let's be li uh, linguistically honest here and say that it is in fact kidnapping. And that, I, 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 I and I would disagree with you. But, okay. but would you say though those instances in which arrest is correct, kidnapping would be an equally moral thing to do? Right. I mean, what, whether or not use the word. Yeah, let's talk about taxation as theft. Um, what that movement is attempting to do is to peel back the lie that taxation is somehow different than theft. It is the taking of a person's money without their consent um, and without their ability to prevent you from doing so. That is, by anybody of, other than the government, is considered to be theft. And it's not... Well, some people would, but uh, in my own advocating and my own usage of that phrase, I have been very vocal to say, I'm not saying that certain taxation, um, the benefits that it provides are not um, outweighed by the fact that you're stealing from people, but it doesn't change the fact that it is in fact no, that. I, 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 I'm going to disagree with you on, okay. on, on this here because... I, I've said it before. I use I use taxation as theft as a bomb. You know, th throwing mm -hmm. bombs all the time. But you're not really being honest with that. Okay. Just like you're not really being honest when you say arresting is the same as kidnapping. It's not the same thing. Now, it, linguistically, can can you make the argument that it's the same thing? Yes, you can. But contextually, if you're being honest, you know that there's a difference between arrest and kidnapping. You okay. know that there's a difference between between taxing taxation. There's and a legalistic theft. difference. But, but there, there 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 is a difference there, and we all know that there contextually. Now that having been said. Is it a good tool for 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 pushing a a, a point through? Absolutely, it's a great tool, but it's not being honest in but, any means. But but let me ask because because when I say it, I'm I'm coming from a from a very perceived honest place. So let let let's leave behind taxation stuff because there's a whole subculture we can get into there. Right. Uh, the less popular one, arresting is kidnapping. Can you point out the things that make them not synonyms? Yes, because because when you're kidnapping, you are doing something that you are committing a crime. You're taking somebody and violating their rights. 
when you are arresting somebody, you are punishing somebody for a crime that was put in place by an elected assembly of the people. Okay. There is a difference there. Fine, fine, fine. So the difference is that an elected assembly said it was okay. That's the difference you're pointing out. But that's a difference. Okay, fine. Well, in the fine. Argu- so if, if this county, this room of people, elects me to say, well, we can go and... and, and, and and take the president. We can go kidnap Donald Trump. And let's say we somehow find the means to do that. And then that is done. That is no longer kidnapping. It's arresting because this body elected me no, to say that. No, it's not the same thing because you're committing, you're doing something that is a federal crime. You are committing a federal crime when you do that. Okay, so. It, the, the, the police officer is not committing a federal crime when he is enforcing the By definition. He's definitionally not. But, okay. Well, that's what we're talking about is definitions. Okay, fine, fine, fine. And what I'm defining is the physical act yeah, and, is the same I, 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 again i think i think that there's i think what you do is you take you, you take a grain of truth or a partial truth there and you say uh i'm drawing an equivocation here and there, there's not an equivocation mm-hmm. now i i am with you and I've, I've even used the statement that 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 you know that the arresting is theft you're taking somebody against their will and, and but but they have done something to make it happen okay so let's let's look at a few cases here in certain countries, it is illegal to speak out against the government. Mm-hmm. In this country, it's not. This mm-hmm. federal body has not said that. Other federal bodies have. So is it kidnapping? Because our Congress hasn't said so. Is it kidnapping when they no, it's not. take somebody? Okay. Because it, it, that, that is their law. So Hold who on. decides what bodies are legitimate to say that and what bodies aren't? Who makes that decision? Well, I think the reason the, dif- the difference is, is if the body is a bo- body made up of the people, it's different because the people... Which people? Are, well, Hold on. The what, pe- the, a majority. What you said was that person has done something to be arrested. Yeah. Now let's talk about so often you're not, a, well, the vast majority of the instances in which a person is arrested, they have not been convicted of a crime. That's true. So in the instances yes. when they are the charged and then yeah. proved innocent, were they kidnapped or were they arrested? No, I think they were arrested. Uh, but they didn't do anything to cause them to you, be arrested. You, you are correct. You are correct. And, and in a pragmatic world, there comes a time when you, you've got to, you've got to, you can't just let people go all the time uh, and do this. There has to be a system there. And that's the system we put in place. So, so you said. Do I think it's a bad system? A lot of times I do. I think there's bad arrests, but it's still an arrest. It's just well, a bad one. You, well, you I'm, s- I'm still arguing that the physical act is the same. You are taking someone against their will and sequestering no, them. I think, I think there is a definition difference between the two. I, the, I, I there really is do. a legal differ, def, difference, absolutely, yes. but you are doing the same physical thing. You are. You are okay. doing the same physical so, thing. But and that's I'm, the argument I'm, that I'm, I've made. I'm doing the same physical thing if I have sex with somebody I'm married to or if I have sex with a dog. But there's, you're doing the same thing, but it's, it's, it's different legally. So... So, Absolutely, okay. I would agree with it's you. A, but, but the same arguments there. It, by definition, we have created a different definition for it. Yeah. So it's not the same. Anyway, you said a majority. That was your answer. What yeah, makes yeah. it legitimate? A majority. So, yeah. a majority of the In people. A popular sovereignty system. It is. A majority of the people that are on this property. So it, let's say you were arrested only on this property for something that this group of people elected. This is a majority. This is what you said, a majority. No, no it's a no? majority of the of the five people that are in this room. It's not a yes. majority of the people that made the law. Okay, you fine. It, it is a majority of the people that made well, the law. You're wrong that on makes, that. That makes you okay, that made this law. Yes. But it's not the majority of the people that made the made the state that, that we live under. Okay, so what gave this okay, so you're talking about a majority of the people that live in the borders of America. Yeah. Versus and or a majority of the people that live in the borders of Mexico. Yeah. yeah or a majority yeah. of the on and on and on. What gave those legislative bodies legitimacy that doesn't give our legislative body legitimacy? Popular What's, sovereignty. The fact that they're the... We they, have they popular are, sovereignty. A majority of the people in this room... The, the majority of five can't go through because they are a minority to the, vast, to, 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 to the rest of the population that we live well, in. Okay, so one country out of all the countries passes a law, but yep. the majority of the world says that shouldn't be a law. So is that law, if somebody enforces that law, is it kidnapping? Uh, we would say so in, in, under international law, yes. So, but 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 no, uh, I I wouldn't see that. I I, I think there is a definition difference here. I, I, that, that's and, and I'm what trying it comes to get to that, to. and and that's really what where I come down. I think there's a, a degree of dishonesty that you're you're pretending like 
like there's not a, there's not an a, a, there's not an understanding of the difference. And, and that's what I'm trying to get to because because the definitional difference that I'm hearing from you is sovereignty. But I've yet to hear one iota of what gave that sovereignty. What is the difference in this body's sovereignty versus that body's? What defines when your body is sovereign? What defines when your body is legitimate? Yeah. Well, uh, again, I I don't think I don't think you can take five people and say we're passing a law. Let's say 10. But I don't think you can take take a, a significant minority and pass a law that is in violation of a of, of a law that was passed by you know by this this large body of this large state um, and again i'm trying to argue this is killing me because mm -hmm. i'm arguing against what i what i fundamentally believe i think that that that, that minority rights are, are are important and i think that uh when you when you when you ask me i say all the time words mean things mm -hmm. uh but there is a there there is and if i think if you are honest with yourself you would have to say that you understand the difference between kidnapping and arrest. Here's the difference oh, I, do. I do understand. Well, and the very fact that you understand it means saying that it's the same thing is dishonest. But I can define no. the difference I say. I, I understand. I can define that real easily. The difference I understand, and it's not a moral argument, is that the state has the guns to enforce theirs and we don't. That's, That's the true. only difference well, I that, understand. That, that is true. I, and and, and I, I would agree. I would agree. Now, now, that state has the guns, but the state was still... In theory, at least, elected by the people, and that's part of the reason why we recognize governments that are uh, that that are chosen by the people, even if even if we don't agree. But we don't recognize governments most of the time that were uh, you know that, that were taken over at force. That's why we've toppled uh, why we toppled Manuel Noriega. But, but you know? we say we don't recognize them, but we only don't recognize governments that were taken over by force that have more force than us. The That's, people under them do recognize it because they yeah, have, yeah. have more force. You're, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely yeah. right. I wouldn't disagree with that. Yeah. I just get I'm, I get back to this idea that I think there is a degree of dishonesty, even if it's even if it comes from an honest place, I think there's a degree of dishonesty in saying that kidnapping and arrest are equivalent. They're the same thing. So, They're not. So the, the thing that I would honestly say is a difference in arresting and kidnapping that I, I feel confident can be, be a definitional change. It's kidnapping if you have to do it in secret. It's arresting if you have the manpower to do it openly and nobody can oppose you. I think that's probably, probably a decent definition. Okay. I think it's probably a decent definition. But But... Even even at that, there's a difference. Okay, fair enough. And which is why I come back to I think there's a degree of dishonesty, and I don't think it's intentional dishonesty. Uh, I, 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 and I think it's a great argument. Mm -hmm. I think it's a great tool to to to, to 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 show it. And I've used it before to say, look, this is what happens when you kidnap somebody. This is what happens when you arrest somebody. There's so many similarities. How can you be? How can you be? Uh, uh, you know, before this and not not for this. Mm -hmm. That's a great tool. But I don't go so far as to say they're the same thing. Okay. All right. All right. We fixed it. No, we didn't. Yeah. Nothing was fixed. Um, Please don't fix me. Yes. Um, so what about... Or, or maybe do. I don't care. So I, I think that when we take a look at, at individuals and we say they are... This person is honest. This person is dishonest. Um we're all dishonest did you like how i pointed to john for honest <laughs> that was entirely unintentional uh -huh. i like, win believe it or not but <laughs> Freudian slip. Oh. <laughs> um i, feel I guess so unloved i guess uh that's that, not fair you're sleeping with her <laughs> <clears throat> whatever you gotta do well, we don't get he's doing it honestly yeah. um <laughs> but anyway it's mediocre it's not know. fair i'm sleeping with you too and you're never on my side that's not true <laughs> at all. I, yeah. She's not protesting that I don't sleep with you. She's protesting that I'm not siding with you. That's the thing she's pissed about. For anyone listening. <laughs> so, we regularly evaluate a person's honesty. Mm -hmm. We yeah. say this person is honest. This person is dishonest. Um, and... I, I don't think that what we are attempting to measure is, or what we're attempting to say with that is that this person is always honest. 100% of the time, this person is always dishonest 100% of the time. And so what we're doing with each instance that we know of in which a person has either been honest or dishonest is we're doing something similar to, to kind of what we described in our... Um, was it value of life or no, it was the, 
was it the suicide episode? I'm lost. I, I don't know okay. where you're going. We did a thing where like the kind of used each, to that by now. Yeah. Each um, incident in your life could be valued as positive or negative, and you know, I'm so glad we have video now, so people can see her hand see and arm signals yes. when she's talking. Yes. If you're not checking this out on video, you're really missing out. You, I also kind of are. I also put fun little drop-ins yeah. in the video. So uh, I, I think uh, I think of a couple of weeks ago when we did Shintoism, uh, there was a whole thing where they talked about dipping the spear in the water. Yes. And then you said, it's a phallic symbol, and I put a little black bar over the spear. <laughs> it was funny. Um, but anyway, and, and so what we did was we kind of measured, you know, this was a good thing, this was a bad thing, and, and talked about... Um, how either that stuff balances out and you can you can evaluate whether you had a good life overall, a bad life overall, or something that mm -hmm. came out in the middle. Um, and I, we do that... Yeah, that was suicide, yes. Okay. We do that with honesty as well. Um, you know, we take the known instances when a person was honest or dishonest um, and, and we evaluate whether or not overall they are honest or not. Um, and so the question that I have to ask here is... Um, we've identified instances where dishonesty is common among society. Um, when someone asks, how was your day? And you say, it was great. When really you got in a fight with your significant other and your boss told you you were doing a shit job and your dog was snuggling in bed with you and then decided to piss on the bed and you it got terrible on your feet. Days. You have terrible <laughs> days, don't you? Lord. Uh, uh, by, by the way, John told me earlier that wasn't the dog. John John just had an accident. Fuck you, John. You lied. You it wasn't an dog. accident. <laughs> I believe that. See? Anyway. Piss me off. I'll piss all over the bed. Yeah. But, you know, you say, I had a great day or it was fine or whatever it was. Um, and these are lies that we accept, that we, in a way, encourage. kind of expect and encourage. Yeah. Um, you look nice today. Yeah. If you ever get tired of someone talking to you, when they ask you how your day was, tell them. Tell them. Yeah. 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 You won't have. You won't have to hear they from will anymore. Never ask you again. I've used that strategy. Yes. Interesting. I might need to. Yeah, it's good, it's good strategy. So anyway. <laughs> um. But the thing that I, I, I kind of want to explore is, should we be evaluating that in their overall honesty score? Um, should it be a binary or, or some kind of sliding scale? Yeah, I mean, for instance, if we look at Aristotle and his, um, his virtue ethics, he defined, kind of, he Actually, in this whole thing, he, he very loose, to, yeah. loosely defined anything. Um, but what he described was a golden mean in which um, you had the vice of deficiency and the vice of excess. And in his descriptions of honesty, um, it wasn't necessarily about telling the truth all the time, but telling the truth in the right circumstances, in the right way, to the right people at the right times. I like Aristotle more every day. <laughs> And you so, and Anne, uh, uh, Anne Ryan, Ryan Anne, Anne Rand, Anne Rand, yeah. Anyway. I like her too. I messed that up. I like yeah. her too. Um, but anyway, Blade. In case you're wondering, they don't like Anne Rand. No. And so, according Fucked to Aristotle, these would be essentially null valuations because you're not supposed to. A virtuous person is not supposed to tell the truth in that instance because yeah. the person. Asking the question doesn't want the truth. Yeah, civic, in that vir instance. civic virtue requires, uh, well, al almost requires you to be dishonest in certain cases mm -hmm. in order to uh, in, in order to keep society uh, functioning properly. Yeah. When somebody comes up to you and says, "Oh my God, I have this great beer. I want you to try it here. Have one," and it's shit. Yeah, they've given you a gift and they they bought it because they thought of you or something like that. And you're Wait, supposed to say, "You're supposed to lie on that one." We, we don't. We well, don't. okay. Um, Most people do, though. Most people a, do. Uh, let's not use beer. Because that's I, a bad one for that. I don't buy on that one. How about, how, about, how about when your significant other asks you, uh, do, do I look good in this? You, you, yes. Do I lie? No. I, I, Even when I don't ask, he doesn't lie. 
See? I, I don't have to lie because mine always looks good in everything. I just have to throw that out there in case she's listening. Um, but uh, shut up. <laughs> I heard that. I don't think that they heard that, but I heard that. Um, but but sometimes there, there's there's a degree of, of um, I don't know, lying that, 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 that helps things. Uh, I think about when the when you watch Senate conf- or S- Senate speeches and you know the honorable senator from West Virginia you're thinking no. to yourself yeah, yeah you really hate Honorable's that son of a bitch ass. you know uh, I, I was gonna say you know it, it's funny we, we talked about uh, addressing your spouse and how they look uh, I found for anyone who decides to be really honest in this one I found that that you look great honey is okay. Honey, that doesn't look good. It's fine too. The one that really pissed him off is, yeah, it's kind of weird. I mean, it looks fine, but it's it's kind of weird. That one gets him to go off. I'm gonna stab him one day. See, see, one day, I will stab. Makes him. your ass look big. I yeah. mean, you look great. Yeah, no. I love and I'll a do big the time ass. For it. Yeah, Willingly, <laughs> I will hey, do the time for it. We need to talk about this beer because you finished yours. That looks like, and uh, I know. Uh, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm getting close, and John's getting yeah. close. So let's talk about this beer. Who so wants to close. start this one? I can start. Or you, do you, you finished? Start? Do you want to? I'd actually like to open another one. All right, I'll start while, while, while y'all are doing that. Then uh, here, split this one up. Okay. We are drinking Mercenary, uh, and, and this is by Odell Brewing Company. It is a double IPA, which uh, you know immediately is puts up uh, big flashers for me. If you're listening to the show for a while, you know that I am not the IPA guy on the show. Um, I shouldn't that, have opened this one. I should have just drank the rest of yours. No, I'm going to I'm gonna finish it. Uh, oh, okay. ha, ha, yeah, ha, I was going to say, no, do you want... No, no, okay. this, this one's fine for more. me. I've got, to, I've got to drive after this. Y'all get to stay here. That's a good point. But this... Um, as far as a double IPA goes, I think this is a a, a pretty good one. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got a, it's got a decent flavor to it. I don't like the hoppiness on the backside, but I'm not going to hit it for it because I think it's the kind of hoppiness that your IPA people are going to like. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I'm not a hoppy guy. I don't I don't like that bitterness you know you're on the not backside. Happy. Uh, <laughs> shh. <laughs> I'm on medication for that. Leave me alone. Um, so it's a, it's a little thinner than I like to have, but that's what you expect in an IPA. Uh, I wish it had a little more of a, a, a of a fruit tone to it. It doesn't mm-hmm. have that. It's very it's very plain. It it, it is citrusy th- throughout the middle, but it, it's not sweet like you yeah, expect. There's no fruit. sweetness to it yeah. at all, uh, which a lot of people are going to like. Again, yeah. I think I think your IPA people are going to like this more than I do. Um, and this is these are the kind of beers that are the hardest for me to to to, to judge because they're not my beer, mm-hmm. you know. And 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 trying to be fair with it. Um, I, I don't think I don't think this is a benchmark beer. I don't think it reaches that level uh, personally. I think it's close. Um, if I'm rating this as my beer, it's not the beer I would want. I would probably go around a two. But I'm going. I'm trying to be fair to it as as a beer that others are going to like. And I'm going to go. Uh, I'm going to go two three. Okay, it's close to a benchmark. Really? Yeah. All right. I find this beer to be. You go next. Incredibly pleasant. Yes. Okay. Um. I'll I'll go ahead and say this before I say anything else about the beer. I give it a three point one. Um, I find it to be hoppy. Three one. Yes. I'm going over her, so don't don't get too. Excited. Y'all are fucking stoned. <laughs> what, drunk. The word is drunk. What whatever no, whatever y'all are using, uh, you, you should be sharing, not with me, because I may have to have a drug test. I don't do that stuff. But, uh, <laughs> y'all, uh, I, I need I need whatever y'all are having if I'm going to enjoy this beer. So. I give it a 3-1. Three, one. Three, um, one. You can count. I, you know that's more than two, right? Yes. Okay. I find, you went over two. Don't get too up in I find this, this beer to be incredibly enjoyable. And I think that this is what a double IPA should be. Um, I think during the height of the IPA craze, this is not what a double IPA was. But I think it's what it should be. Um, it has the over hopped <clears throat> taste um that a double ipa should have but that's not all that there is to it it's still got a lot of non-hop flavor and no, non-hop it's got smell. that shit dishwater taste too so you know it's, it's got both i think you are absolutely right that it doesn't have as much of a fruit yeah. profile as i would like to see in it um but i think I think this would actually be a good introductory IPA for someone who is more in favor of lagers. 
All right. Well, I'll, I'll go next. I, th- I think you hit hit a few great points on this one. Uh, uh, what, th- wait, she hit she hit great points. Yes, great points. Really? I'm going to stab yeah. you too. I didn't hear any great points. When I start stabbing I people, I'm going to do points. it like all yeah. Yeah. at once because I don't want to have to like wait until I get out of jail to stab another person. <laughs> so I, I think this this has a great hot profile. It it, it starts in uh, with a medium ramp, comes in with with a very smooth transition through the back. It definitely has some citrus Isn't notes in it. <laughs> Hold what the up. fuck is he drinking? <laughs> Are you drinking a different beer? <laughs> Did y'all give me the shit bear? <laughs> Possibly, I don't know. <laughs> you are so indignant. It's fantastic. It, uh, it 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 definitely doesn't have the sweetness, and and honestly, it doesn't do anything special. I I, I think that a a a clove or cinnamon back end would have would have done this this mm, beer well. That would have been great. Um, actually, we said earlier that the ABV was. Uh, Oh, no, we were right. It's a 9.3. Okay, I thought we said 8-something. We okay. did, I thought. But 8 was okay. on the last one. Okay. Okay. 9.3. It's a 9.3. Um, hey, that's a good point on this one. Yeah. Because you can get really drunk and you don't have to taste it anymore. <laughs> but it, 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 it's got a, a very smooth transition rating? profile. No, I was trying to be fair. <laughs> okay. It, um, it, but I think there, there's some things I could have done with this. I, I would this like to... Me. To see a, a a mercenary, you know, seasonal release where where, where they do some extra with it, but I That'd think I think it's yeah. called mercenary because it kills people. I think they're getting sponsorship money. I think so. <laughs> I think. <laughs> but I, I think this is an IPA well done. I think you're right. That there's a lot of double IPAs that early on in the movement mm-hmm. where they tried to sit there and smack you with a bag of hops right right there in the beginning. This doesn't do that. It's it's it's. I'm very- frankly surprised nobody came out with a beer where they. Like when you bought it and you're at the cash register, somebody just grabs a bag of hops and hits you over the head with it. It would be a, <laughs> a really great selling. Be like if you bought this and they just gave you a bunch of oats to eat. You know that would be. Yeah, <laughs> but but I I think they made a a really good beer here um, because they didn't do anything that makes it special. That takes it over the top. They just made a really solid double IPA. I'm only gonna give it a three point six. But only what only a three plus is wrong with you. It's a great beer. There is something. I, I, okay, look, look. I do think look, that's a look, little high. Look, this is this is this is this is fucking ridiculous. The show, the, our ratings are always kind of weird, but this is fucking ridiculous that you're giving this beer, beer this beer. high. This beer is adequate at best. It's not even a benchmark beer. There's no way y'all really believe it. Y'all, y'all are just y'all are just trying to fuck with me at this point, aren't you? No, three six. Oh, I. I, I Blaine, come get on the microphone. Tell us what you thought of the beer. <sighs> okay, I guess, I guess this is happening. Hi, hi Blaine. Hello. Tell everybody at home hi. I don't know. I, I think it's an IPA that's about it. It's really not that great for me. It's, I mean, it's it's pretty hop. It's what you expect when you get a double IPA, but like I don't taste any. Like you said, they didn't really do anything different. They were just making an IPA. Some people like that. I just I don't really enjoy it. So the IPA, the, the, the non-IPA people are going to hit this one. If you're an IPA person, you know what? Here, I want to do this. What's the IBU on this? Uh, I can tell you real quick. The IBU is, oh, it's in here somewhere, a 70. Yeah. So it's, you want to know what it got on Beer Advocate? I don't care. 4.28 out of 5. How Damn. Did, how does 4. that 4.28 out of 5. I'm a Beer Advocate person, and I don't know how that Yeah. Happened. I think that's This weird. is a great beer. I don't... Who I, are they... Pe- that's Four point two eight out of five. Floating around, you're not getting. That's what it is. So I don't know. I give it. A <laughs> so, so Blaine says two and a half, and uh, you know he so, still rated it higher than you. He still rated it higher than me, but he rated it at least. At least he's and playing I, I in the like same IPA. ballpark. I, I like IPA. Yeah, he's playing in the same ballpark <laughs> as I am. I don't know what the hell y'all are doing. Uh, We're in the same ballpark as the masses, apparently. Yeah, well, that's that's, of, where, that's where you want to be. With two, the masses. 2,904 ratings. The beer ratings. lovers, the, maybe. The, yeah. the masses elected Donald Trump. That's who you're with. So just so you know. Uh, Nobody who doesn't terrible. love beer is on there. Terrible. Terrible. I think it was I think it was one person that went back and rated 20,000 20, times. 20,000. Uh, wow. I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm disappointed in you. I, I can actually feel the disappointment in my, my cast. I can too. Don't feel members. bad. So, um. In my research into the value of honesty, and we're just going to abruptly transition here. Yes, do it. <laughs> Fuck y'all. We, in my research into the value of honesty, I found a lot of uh, advocation for people to be uh, 
honest about everything. It, it was amazing yeah. to me. Now, um, a lot of these were from uh, religious standpoints. In fact, one of them blew my mind, said that the reason that bad things happen in the world, not to you, in the entire world, the reason that there's famine, the reason that there are floods, the reason that there are hurricanes and bombings is because you, you don't tell the truth all the time. Because I, 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 I told, I, I told my, my teenage daughter that lives with me that she looked good in that dress. That's why. That's, yeah. That's why famines happen. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up. Because I can affect the fucking weather with that. <laughs> hey, it gets better. He also said that um, <coughs> that honesty, when when people are honest, they come together, and it's a it's a near sexual experience because the epitome of sex is to come together. <laughs> And so, when people are honest, it is, a, it is a sexual experience. It was, this was all the same guy speaking. Well, it was mind Well, I don't know, but I'm going to try that honesty thing out now. <laughs> <laughs> that is a, it, if you want people to be honest, I think that's a good way to approach it. That's a good thing. Uh, I, I can I, really, I'm trying it out. I can really sympathize with what he's saying here. Um, not that I agree with it at all, but... My views on honesty from from early on came from a very religious place. I mean, I, I know somebody who talked to me now may not may not recognize it, but I grew up in a religious household, right? Um, and, and and it's actually ironic because the the honesty value, the honesty principle, was religion's downfall in my life. Because when I started to question the whole thing, and I said. If God knows my every thought, I'm lying and saying that I'm not questioning these things. So I had to like come out, and that really led me to to, to a place of exploration. <laughs> Reminds me of Christopher Hitchens, who was asked one time uh, why he became an atheist, and he said, "Because I read the Bible." Um, yeah. So, so w with that, honesty was really key in my religion, and then in my uh, 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 agnostic transition and then that was something i carried on through my life even further so i can really kind of sympathize from a religious aspect with where he's coming from mm -hmm. um and I, I guess there's not not a whole lot more to add to that but i can see from from the bible where you would get that especially with mm -hmm. the west idolatry of the ten commandments over all the other commandments given mm -hmm. yeah yeah so um but it affects weather yeah. Oh yeah. 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 You yeah. haven't seen the the the, the dishonest weather. <laughs> Go tell a lie and see if somewhere in the world a storm doesn't happen. The other day, the weatherman lied to this me and told wonderful. me that it was going to be sunny <laughs> and it rained because of that. Yeah, <laughs> that's what it was. So anyway, um, one of the other things that I, I found in in my research was um, a claim, and and I found this in several places that. The reason that people lie is to get external benefits. Yeah. And that honesty, while it may not provide you the same external benefits, it provides you the internal benefit of peace and um, and self-esteem and things like that. But I want to explore that. Yeah. Because... I can understand that. I can't. And I don't think that it's entirely wrong, but I think it's a little dishonest. Well, but, but ah. here, here's the problem with it. Your internal benefits really come from an internal place, an individual place, maybe a better way to say it. So where some people may get those benefits from an internal honesty, other people may be drug, drug addicts and get those internal benefits from crack. You really can't tell on a mass population scale where those internal benefits come from. There are some people that are addicted to lying. They want to see how yeah. much they can lie or steal. And to those people, it's the exact opposite. Yeah, we opposite. call those people senators. Yes. Oh. Yeah. Yes. But, uh, so I, I, I understand how there are a large group of people that feel that way, mm -hmm. but I don't think the statement applies in mass. Yeah. So what do I, what I want to, I think it's a good tool though. What I want to explore good here are what are the benefits derived from honesty and dishonesty? Because I think that, 
I don't think that the argument of um, inner peace and self-esteem is strong enough to encourage people to be honest, to give them a reason to be honest. And I, I don't think it's strong enough to encourage all people. All people. Yeah. I think, and, it's, I think it is pretty strong enough to encourage many people. For some people, I think that it is. Yeah. But I want to take a look at some of the other benefits of being honest. Um, one of the biggest ones being reputation. The, the measure between honesty and dishonesty in your reputation, when, when you have been honest, when you say something, people feel confident that they can yeah, take absolutely. that as truth. Um, and, and that is I think frankly that's, immeasurable. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. I think that's the single biggest advantage to, to, to honesty. Do you all but, see any others? But yeah, absolutely. Oh, and, and and pra pragmatically. That. Pragmatically. Uh -huh. uh, and, and, and you're going to think I'm joking, but I'm really not. I mean this. The value of honesty is that it's easier because you don't have to remember. Everything. I was going to say that way. And uh, you know, I, I, I jokingly said earlier, but it, but it's true. I try and be an honest man, not because I, I value honesty, although I do. I try and become an, be an honest man because I'm a bad liar. I just I, I it's I, stressful. I don't, to I don't lie. want the stress in my life of remembering all those stories and trying to keep it straight. Um, that's got to be a hard way to live. Yeah, and and I did live that way at one point in my life when I was younger. I mean, I, 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 I here here, and, and I'm at the point now where. If you catch me, you catch me. I'm just, I'm, I, it's, it's, it's what's going to happen. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to tell you the truth as much as possible. I don't think anybody can be completely honest, right? Yeah. But uh, as, as much as I possibly can, because it's easier. Yeah. It's easier to tell the truth. Yeah. For anyone who has, um, who has lived a lie, they know how incredibly difficult and stressful that is. Um. I was uh, there was a there was a guy in the pool hall, a, a girl in the pool hall, three or four months ago. We were talking about I don't know how we got into this, but she told me she said uh, uh, that she told somebody when she was like twelve years old that she was allergic to chocolate, and she was like twenty five years old now, and she couldn't eat chocolate around anybody because because she told this story and she was trying to keep this this, this going. I don't even know how we got into the discussion of this. But she's like, I, I told this, this this white lie thinking it was a one-time thing, yep. but now everybody knows I'm allergic to chocolate, and I can't <laughs> I can't say anything because nobody will trust me again. But I, yeah. I, I think that, that that's a situation, and a lot of people fall into the trap, but that's a situation where a philosopher could maybe be better at lying because they realize that your fear of a thing is much worse than the thing itself. Yeah. Imagine if tomorrow she just came out and she just ate chocolate in public and somebody said, you're alert chocolate. I'm like, yeah, I lied. I've been lying this yeah, whole time. It would all be over with immediately. And yeah. nobody would care, but she's so worried about this long-term repercussion yeah. that she's created the longer-term repercussion <laughs> for herself, right? Yeah. Well, you know, it's kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy. And honest and and when when we talk about lying, I see the problem is this. It's really an illustration of the prisoner's paradox. For anyone who doesn't know what the prisoner's paradox is, it's a situation in which there there are two people that have been uh, stopped for let's say robbery. We did a hard shot on that once, didn't we? I, I think we did. Yeah, yeah. I think we did. But but they've been stopped for a robbery, and the 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 offers they're given is if both of you um, fess up and and rat on the other one, you're both going to do let's say five years. If one of you rats on the other one, but the other one didn't rat on them, they're going to do ten years, but you're only going to do three years. And if both of you are are, are honest, then you'll both do four years. Well, the benefit to the, or sorry, sorry, let me say that the other way. If both of you lie, you're both going to do four years. The benefit to the group is to both do your four years. That's the least amount of total time served uh, on this situation. But in every situation, your personal benefit is to lie. So you always come out better personally if you lie, but you come out better as a group if you tell the truth. And I think that that is a model for society if we were all honest mm -hmm. and we were all accepting of honesty i think society would be better but every person has an advantage in lying to the people around them so you have to weigh on your scales of life 
whether or not your personal benefit outweighs the greater benefit of society and then move forward with that. And I don't know if my numbers in the in the prisoner's paradox were correct, but the, the idea is still there. That you benefit personally on, on, on small scale terms, because I think we're going to talk about your your uh, uh, what you owe to your future self in line, but society benefits from telling the truth. I mean, does that sound yes? Like- yeah, yeah. Um, it, 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 it's you've got to do the math there of of personal value versus value to society. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, honestly, the calculus always comes out on the on the side of, of personal value. And I think that's part of it. Well, I think we're wired that way. Yeah, yeah. I think we can overcome it. But uh, we only o- overcome it through uh, um, uh, uh, testing out all the possible things. And, and, and I think uh, eventually evolution will lead us to a place where we, we decide that as a society we're doing better th- than otherwise. Yeah I, yeah, I tend to agree. Well, and l- let's take a look at the, the person you spoke to at the pool hall the other day um, who told the lie about not being or about being allergic to chocolate. Um we take a look at that, and it, it's interesting to me that she chooses to continue the lie versus coming out and saying, yes, when I was 12 years old, I told a lie that I was allergic to chocolate. I'm not really allergic to chocolate. Um, and being able to live honestly from that point on, because um, I imagine she's got to be uh, exerting a stress on herself well, you, with that lie. Whereas, I I wonder if she wouldn't gain uh, because distance of the lie is entirely relevant. Um, I remember coming out to my parents. Um, Wait, you came out? <laughs> when did this happen? Coming out to. <laughs> God damn it. Suddenly, John makes sense. I understand why y'all got married. Coming out to my parents um, a, a couple of years ago about something that I did like 10 years ago. Mm-hmm. And it was not an, an honesty that I would have been willing to do then. But now that I've, the distance is long enough from that lie that it was more beneficial to me to tell the truth. Rather than having to hear her recount this story yeah. that was not true at all yeah, to people, I, I was able to say, look, I that never a, actually happened. I had a similar uh, <laughs> a, a story a couple of years ago at, at Christmas or Thanksgiving or, or something. When my sisters were little, when we lived just down the road here from y'all, one of my little sisters broke one of my mother's prize. I've forgotten what it was. Broke something that my mother loved. I was already in trouble. I took the hit for it, mm-hmm. uh, you know, in order to... And I guess it was about two years ago, Katie, uh, Katie came out and told everybody that, uh, that she really did it in this stuff. And you would have thought that we had axe murdered a family of four <laughs> because my mother was so disappointed that we had lied to her for all these years. Well, see, you and did. I was still keeping the lie going. I said, yep, because mom would tell that story about when I broke that. I go, yep, I, you know, I, I was keeping it going. I had to protect my sister. <laughs> see, and you defeat my point there because yeah. my point is like it's been long enough that nobody's going to give a shit. And then well, you're like, you know, no, but my mama but gave a shit. She, she, she did. She did for that night. Now, now yeah. we all laugh about it. You exactly. Know? But for that night, it was it was hell that night. I can't yeah. believe y'all lied to me. But I, I think this is part of the fallacy of self-importance. When we sit there and say, mm. if I tell people that I told a lie once, they'll think something bad about me. And that's an important thing. And I don't think it is. Honestly, I think if that girl you were talking about had gone into a room full of her closest friends and they're all and mingling just into chocolate into her and face. And stood up on a table and said, I'm not allergic to chocolate. They'd have said, Oh, so we get down for the table yeah. now. Uh, I, I'm free. Yeah. 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 But but I, I would love for her to do that just to know how many people actually remembered her saying she was allergic to. But job. I don't think anyone gives a shit. But you know what was funny is, is, is I I remember now how that started was uh she was there with a guy and he came up and asked what do you have have as far as snacks back there and I told him and he goes oh well there's nothing there she can eat because she's allergic to chocolate. Oh my god. Well then he left he left to go to the beer at the store or something and she came up to me and do you have a Kit Kat? You know? <laughs> <laughs> that is hilarious. But so, yeah, um, she should just be like yeah. that, and then nobody would give a shit, and she, and she would realize two things. One, she can eat chocolate again, and two, she's not an important person. Yeah. Nobody's an important that, person. That, yeah. that, or she should have eaten the chocolate and then fallen on the floor in all pain those, and gotten all okay, the sympathy was, after that. All those years of not eating chocolate were wasted. They weren't really wasted. That's a different story. Uh, uh, yeah. So... I, 
moving on from Please. the benefits of honesty versus dishonesty. And I think, I, well, actually, I guess we didn't talk about the benefits of dishonesty. My, my beer is broken, so. Uh. Um, and I, I do tend to think that the benefits of dishonesty are external. I haven't yet been able to think of any internal benefit of dishonesty unless maybe from a sociopathic perspective well, or, or dishonesty where, to yourself well yeah but I, I think you can argue from the uh a more sociopathic perspective that a person could gain uh pers personal satisfaction and, shaking his head like I know you're an he idiot. Is. um could gain personal satisfaction from being able to dupe people so 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 let let me let me uh well and, and I don't think it's sociopathic at all. Um I, I think to argue sociopathy, you would have to argue the same that it was equally sociopathic to be able to outrun somebody in a race, right? Mm -hmm. You mentally challenge somebody versus you physically challenge somebody why is well, one sociopathic and, I be and one clear isn't. here. I'm not saying that in getting satisfaction from being able to dupe people that a person is themselves yep. a so sociopath but i do think that that is a sociopathic tendency and I, I don't think it is i, I don't think I it think is at all human tendency i'll tell a story about where i was a unknowing What's participant in a lie um i was actually playing poker at the pool hall one oh, time i thought this was going to be the ball gag story no, no um i was playing <laughs> i was playing poker at the pool hall one time and i started hitting hands i yeah. was winning and come to find out the person who was dealing the cards, who's a good friend oh, of mine, okay. was actually slipping me cards. They weren't getting any monetary value. I think I took them out to dinner afterwards. <laughs> I, I, I won the, the big pot. But they weren't value. doing it with the intent but, of getting yeah. it. But they didn't know that I was going to yeah. take them out to dinner. Uh, at the time they were doing it, they weren't getting monetary yeah. value. Um, but they wanted to test their system if they could set the cards while, while, while playing. And... They didn't know that the, the profits would be shared. Maybe that they could infer that and everything. But it was just a test of their mental capability versus the other one. They had started kind of a, an unknown mental competition in the room. And I don't think there was sociopathy involved. In fact, I know the person. Uh, we have very deep moral, moral discussions from time to time. He's a sociopath. You think you think Bear's a sociopath? Th sociopath. Sociopath. Well, um, but I, I think that no. they, they were trying... I hope he's listening. He's so sweet. He probably isn't. No. Uh, but Except for that that's why I feel... took that cigarette out of my mouth and broke it and threw it away. But that's, that's why I feel safe story. with calling him he's a sociopath. He's done that to me so many times. Yeah. Anyway. He doesn't remember doing that to me. Oh, well... He's kind of a dick. <laughs> he's done it so many times, he probably doesn't remember. He's a <laughs> just saying. smoking. Anyway, just sorry, saying. go ahead. He's kind of a dick. But the point is... Sometimes. Uh, that was an instance in which somebody was lying solely for the purpose of finding out if they could get away with it, but not in a way uh, that that intended great harm. Yeah, you could you could argue some f small financial loss, but honestly, if you look at the grand scheme of things, it was small. They really wanted to see what they were capable of, and if you're going to argue sociopathy on seeing what you're capable of, I think you have to argue sociopathy on every great human endeavor yeah. that's ever been undertaken okay. by the race. Okay. I think you make a fair point here. Um, and I'll have, I'll say that. How about me? Did I make a fair point when I said bear was a dick? Yes. Okay. Um, so I, I do think that you make a fair point there. My own description um, and and the way that I envisioned that in my mind was more for the sheer uh, enjoyment of duping people rather than to see if a system works. There or are those. To, there are those. There yeah. are. And I, I think that, um, I think exploiting others for your own enjoyment well, is know, a sociopathic... Uh, how about... Oh, okay. Now, how about those... We know somebody... <laughs> We know somebody who is physically incapable of telling the truth Wait, all, which the way, one? all the way through a story. <laughs> which one? That'll start a story. Oh, and yes. Will, I mean, I know who he's talking physically about. Physically incapable of reaching the end of that story. But they're great stories. I don't but they believe are great that great that stories. person they, is incapable. They, they are great stories. I, I, I think he's incapable. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, I think but he'd like you to believe that. I think he's incapable. Uh, I, you know, <laughs> what's the value? What's the value of truth there? You know, honestly, for the love of God, can someone turn off the heater? There, is it? It's not in here. It's it's right behind you. Okay. So, anyway, sorry. Story sorry, um, person. Anyway, uh, you know, 
with that, th th there have been some cases where. <laughs> Boy, you can just walk across. Okay, you don't just walk okay. across. It's amazing. <laughs> John, you did not have to acknowledge that. Thank you. No, no, no. no, no. That was yes. great. I love you're it. good. You're good. Oh, no, Blaine, press it again. Blaine is crawling across the press floor so he's not on the on, on, on the camera. I don't know how to work your heater. Okay, leave it alone. <laughs> this is our this is our show right here. Leave it alone. We have okay. guys crawling across the floor. So with that. There have been circumstances where I have heard a story and thought it was complete bullshit from him. Yeah. But I enjoyed the story so much. I didn't say a word. It's storytelling. Yeah. I just I just yeah. enjoyed it. And I can say the same thing whenever I've heard a religious story. Yeah. Now, you may think that that's wrong because your religion is the truth. Like the one of the striped and the spotted cows? Yeah, the striped and spotted cows. Anyway. Or the turtle with the, with the universe. But, yes. but consider that if you believe your religion, you don't believe all the other religions. And consider yeah. any of their stories. Haven't you ever just sat and heard a story like the allegory of the cave? I, I agree. I agree. And said... But that's such a great story. I'm just going to sit here and enjoy it and not. I have argued for years that you've got to take it as a take take it as a story. But yeah, but oh, we yeah. get back to this idea of of the value of truth, and I just yeah. I had to had to throw that one out. I think there's some value to ideas that are conveyed outside of truth. Yeah, and I, I, I agree. I, I agree. There was always a great idea with yeah, his stories. I agree. And and you know the other thing that came to my mind when you were talking there was was that that. There's a whole industry of self-help built around lying to yourself. Oh yeah. I mean, there's how many times have you heard, uh, you know? I just, actively you, tell myself that I'm not a piece yeah, of shit. If you tell yourself over and over again, if you if you, if you keep saying it, you can speak the truth into existence. Yeah. I am like successful. Trump did. Like I am, Trump did. Like, yeah. Oh. I am not a piece of shit. I am not a piece of hey, shit. Theoretically, that, that one, one day. That one didn't work for <laughs> Trump, but uh, but but he did become president. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, yeah, that's you know, the whole but, theory behind affirmations. But lot, are, are you not lying to yourself? Right. You know, now maybe not. I'm not a piece of shit. You're not. But uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I was going to an extreme. But, you know, but whatever. But there are there 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 are those. Af I am successful. Uh, I am. I am wealthy. I am successful. Right. No, you're not. You live on your your mom's house. You live on the couch. You're not wealthy. Yeah. Is it okay if you use affirmations and say not past tense or present tense? I'm not a piece of shit. I am successful. But you say today I'm going to be successful. Yeah. Is that okay? Like, I, I, I think it's all okay. I don't. Th I don't think I'm not making a. Is it judgment. different? I think it is different. Okay. I think it is different. Yeah. But but I think it's all okay. I think uh, I think that honesty is is a good thing. I think it's something that we should strive for. Strive for. But I do not think that that honesty is something that uh, that is always uh, the right thing to do. I think sometimes. Dishonesty is, is can be the right. Do thing you to do. have a line or a litmus you test on when dishonesty is? Well, do you have a line or a litmus test on when dishonesty is or isn't okay? I, or is I, it very utilitarian? I think for it's you? very utilitarian. It's, it, it, you know, yeah. how, how does it work out here? You know, there's. I get back to that. Uh, you, you know, uh, when you look at your, you know, you got that kid that you can do this. You can do this. You, uh, mm -hmm. you, if you study hard. But you know, really, realistically, you can't do this. You, yeah. you, you don't have it. But so, if I tell you enough, you'll do better. Yeah. So I want to explore what harm comes. I think I'm just going to presuppose here that we and our listeners can already identify harm caused by dishonesty. Sure, sure. But let's take a look. What harm comes from honesty? I think... Yeah, we, we've yeah. already talked about um, one of the external benefits of honesty is a an increase in your reputation. But I, I think that's also something that you risk you, you, actually harming. You can lose a lot of friends. Oh, yeah. Well, beyond that, let, let's look at the situation where your friend comes up to you. Your friend is a loser piece of shit. You know that inside. You would never tell anybody, but they're your friend. They're your loser piece of shit friend. We all have one. You don't have to say who yours is. I have a bunch. But they I, come, I started a podcast with mine. They come up to you and they say... I was over here consoling you for having so many <laughs> shitty pieces of friends and whatever. It wasn't any help. You're one of them. Um, <laughs> but they come up to you I and they you. tell you, you know, too. I've been thinking about it and I think I'm a loser piece of shit. <laughs> and I'm thinking about killing myself. Uh, oh, that was alarming. And so all of a sudden, you have a, a decision. You like your friend. Yeah. You really don't want them to kill when, you. When you want to look at them and say, you are a loser piece of shit, but I value you. Yeah. 
And maybe that's the right answer to yeah. give, but I was going to say, I have never, like, I've talked several people down from that ledge when they've expressed to me that they felt that way. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I don't want to take credit for talking people off the ledge. I have had people express to me that they wanted to kill themselves. Yeah. And I'll say this in, in practice, I've never said you shouldn't kill yourself because I don't think that's my determination to make. Yeah. But have rather expressed to them what it is that I value in them and why I don't want them to not be around. So, yeah, I I, I have a friend who I I dearly value, and he has the ridiculous political ideas, <laughs> and he, you know what I'm talking about too. And he comes to me all the time. He goes, "Are you crazy?" And sometimes I, I I'm really brutally honest with him, like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, you are." But sometimes I say. That's not something I care about enough to give you the hit right. of saying, yeah, that's completely insane. And so I sit there and I say, I sidestep the question. I've never just lied to the guy yeah. like directly, but I sidestep the question. And I think when you say anything, I think it's a cop out to say that you, to, to, to point to Kant and say that you take the reins of destiny from their hands when you lie to them, but you leave it in their hands when you don't. And say, I don't have responsibility for the truths I tell. I have responsibility for the lies. I think that's a compound. You have responsibility for the words that yeah, come out of your mouth. Absolutely. Yeah. Truth or lie, and you need to own up to them. And that's a hard decision. It's often a dilemma. A dilemma means two bad choices. Yeah. And you need to face that, and you need to be the responsible person and say. I'm glad John what explained to think. me what dilemma meant. <laughs> well, it was for I. I, I, yeah. I was, it was worried not for you. <laughs> I don't want to. Yeah, yeah. I, I I don't want to talk down on you. Yeah, yeah. I thank thanks. Yes. I appreciate that. <laughs> the word he would use for smarter people is condescend. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> With me. I don't want to make you feel like a piece of shit. Yeah. But I think you have responsibility for the words you say. And to say that there's this magic line in the sand where truth doesn't have that responsibility and lies do, I think is a childish cop out. I agree. I, I think it's I think it's a, a, a very elementary way of understanding. Yeah. Uh, and again, I think that I think truth is is generally the better thing. But there is a there is a room for dishonesty. Well, there just I, is. I think yeah. truth is based in trust. When you tell someone the truth, you have a trust in them that they will use that truth in a responsible way. Yeah. Some people don't. And when you don't tell them the truth, it's not because you 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 want to just do them harm. I think the rare instance occurs where you want to hurt them, but in the most instances, it's a lack of trust. And maybe that's a a a justified lack of trust maybe it's unjustified but it's because you don't trust them to use the truth in a responsible manner right so um I, I want to hop back to aristotle on this one before we wrap the episode up well i guess before i jump to aristotle is there anything else about honesty and the value it has that you guys want to address no i i i, I think think we pretty much covered it by the way you look nice today oh well, i just want to throw that you. out there wait a minute what your, lip <laughs> your lipstick on this side missed part of the lip i just uh i'm gonna leave it up to you as to which which tactic i'm using but you look you look wonderful today you know what i'm gonna assume you're being honest and i'm gonna say thank you very yeah, much and that, i'm not gonna stab think, you today think that's a that's a good good strategy Probably. to have it's a good strategy to have so anyway john you look like a piece of shit wow okay i know you're being honest yeah. thank you so anyway you trust me i appreciate it <laughs> i do i do um i want to jump back to aristotle because i i think it's interesting, his solution, because as, as we outlined earlier, he did not um, define things well. He left it all very loose, um, doing the right thing at the right time to the right people in the right way, um, and, and, and that this golden mean you were supposed to somehow find, and he did... You really don't like him, do you? I do. No, okay. Because um, I really do. And so I really liked his solution because people said, you know, how is it that we're supposed to figure this out? And his solution was to find moral exemplars. People that in your life you view as this person is honest the right way. They aren't 
assholes about it, but they tell the truth in a relevant way when the truth is needed, and they and they don't say other things that may be truthful, but that people don't need to hear. And and so I in hearkening back to Aristotle, I want to say that I think we should all be striving for truth and that we should be finding our own moral exemplars. I don't think that any of us can say that we are that person. Um, I am and, that person. And you don't necessarily have to um, let that person know that you are following their example. You and, can and be an honest go ahead and let stalker. Me know. Go ahead you can, and let me know. You can be a stalker of honesty, but observe that person and emulate that person. And oh, wow, you stalk them. I hope that through that we can all become moral exemplars for others. Do we want to do a round robin of who our moral exemplars are? Oh, Lord. Yeah, sure. Mike, go, that, go ahead. Nobody's no, going to no, know no, who no, I'm I, referencing. I want to go later. I want to go later. Okay, I'll start with mine. Um, Pendulette. Interesting. Charlie Brewer. Pendulette. Charlie Brewer. Andrew Jackson. I told you, nobody's going to know Andrew mine. Jackson. Andrew Jackson. No. Uh, I, know, I, I, know, I know you yeah, do. Andrew Jackson, because uh, yeah, he uh, he had a a, a uh, <clears throat> loose uh, understanding of, of truth that, yeah. but he seemed to always be shooting for the right direction. So yeah, mine was an old boss of mine. Yeah, um, I actually it, it's funny because I was unemployed, and I made a deliberate decision to start attending um, a specific church. <laughs> where I viewed that the people there were successful and, uh, and good people. And I wanted to be a successful good person. So I started attending this church because I, I knew that the people that I was surrounding myself weren't the type of people I wanted to be. And so I, I chose to start surrounding myself with people similar to what I wanted to be. I found moral exemplars and, um, I ended up getting a job from Charlie Brewer, and uh, he continued to be my moral exemplar for a long time. Cool. Mine does car tricks and puts fire in some of his orifices. <laughs> <laughs> Primarily never, his never, mouth. Never mind. Never mind. I'm going with Pendulette, too. <laughs> so anyway. Just for the orifice, orifices. <laughs> orify. Orify. Yes. yes. Uh, it's Latin, so you got you to go with the orify. Yeah, okay. Gotcha. Yes. Gotcha. Yes. Have so, we have we covered this one? I think so. I think uh, we have. It's a um, lot of fun. I'm glad you I, I was, had fun. I'm a little nervous about this one. Um, I know? was too because so often what we do is we end up referencing the works of other philosophers. Yeah, yeah. And my goal with this one was was not necessarily to spend a whole lot of time talking about what other people said, but explore what it was that we viewed ourselves. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it, I it, find it those different. to be our best episodes. And it was it, 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 it was deep, but it was it, it made each of us struggle with it with it within ourselves. Yeah. And honestly, the beer was a 9.3. ABV. Uh -huh. <laughs> so anyway, with that, um, I oh, want to go beer. ahead and recommend get a podcast a to you guys for this episode. Um, it's one that I really like. I, I want to say they've done almost 300 episodes. Um, I don't remember how frequently they come out, but it does some more in-depth dives on on specific people and, and sometimes even specific topics, but it's called, simply enough, The History of Philosophy. Um, and it, it's a podcast that I have generally just listened to, but I also find it to be really good whenever I'm researching a topic um, to see if I can find an episode of theirs that's relevant yeah, yeah. to what, what it is that we're speaking about. There's actually a bit in the show that we forgot. I don't know if we want to go back to it, but there was kind of a kerfuffle Around the beer, <laughs> and we didn't answer the three questions. Do we want to? Do you want to do that? Uh, yeah, is yeah, it a lawnmower yeah, beer? Yeah, uh, yeah. It, this is the beer that you put under the lawnmower before you uh, before you <laughs> mow the yard. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Dick Rupertar. I'm gonna I'm gonna go a little bit deep into the pack because as we see, there's some controversy over where this beer lies. I think you can find some out, but you don't want to start out on this one. I'm gonna mm -hmm. go number three. Yeah, uh, this is only getting you. This isn't a beer that's going to just unequivocally get you laid unless you are trying to sway somebody who really likes IPAs. If you're trying to sleep with me, this beer will not work for that's you. That's true. Uh, I, who am I lying? This beer will still work for you if you're trying to sleep with me. Yeah, Fair yeah, point. Yeah. 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 All right. So. Well, with that, I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. As always, we've enjoyed it, and we hope you have too. Cheers, guys. Cheers. 
Six Pack Philosophy is supported by independent philosophers just like you. If you would like to support us, go to sixpackphilosophy.com and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe.